Hey, what is up guys and welcome to this quick little video. Uh, the reason for this video is a question that I got from one of my viewers. Uh, thank you very much Pauline de Voogd for sending in a question. Uh, now she is modeling an octopus in SOLIDWORKS and she would like to add some suction cups on the arms of the octopus. So that's a kind of repetitive detail. I'm sure everyone could model one suction cup, that's not a problem. But you want to copy it a gajillion times and you don't want to do all the commands that, that many times. So you want to have a quick method of uh, applying repetitive detail over your model. But of course in a more organic way, because we're not making a machine, we're making an actual animal. Um, uh, so yeah, you can use this for teeth, for bumps, for scales, for any kinds of, of repetitive detail like horns on your model that, that should look organic, but are actually the same object copied a bunch of times and maybe scaled up or down a little bit. So yeah, that's what we'll be doing. Now it's great that you sent in a question. I love to respond to all of your questions. Uh, now I do want to remind you that I prefer if you send a message or even better post a screenshot of your problem on the Facebook page of 3D Pilot and I'll get in touch uh, with you that way so that my response can be viewed by um, not just you, but maybe it can help others as well. So yeah, post your next question in the comments below uh, on the Facebook page of 3D Pilot and we'll get in touch right there. So without further ado, let's do it. So this is a little demo scene I'll be working on. I've got a octopus arm, which is just a simple surface loft between two profiles with a 3D sketch as a guiding curve. Uh, and I've also made this little suction cup model. So this is just a revolved spline uh, and it's just its own separate, separate surface body. Um, also in the sketch of this, um, this suction cup, I added a point, which we'll use later. Uh, you'll see why. Um, but it's just important to add a point that's somewhere around the middle of your suction, suction cup in height. So the first thing we're going to do is add a sketch, a 3D sketch, uh, to define where these suction cups will be. So I'll turn to the bottom of this arm and just press the, um, the point command and just hit the keys a little uh, a few times to define where your suction cups will appear. There we go, that's what we want. Uh, the other, these points automatically map to the surface, so that's perfect. And we can get out of this sketch and we can use it. There we go. The next thing is to copy this little body, um, this little surface body onto all of these points. So we go to features and the linear pattern, we use the sketch driven pattern. Uh, we already had the sketch, the three sketch selected, so that's these points. The reference point will be that point that we made earlier. So that'll be the, the center point of our section cup, the point that will appear on the surface. Uh, now we don't want any uh, features or faces copied, we want bodies to be copied. So we'll select this body. Now it might, it might look kind of wonky, um, like it won't appear on the surface, this is just a little bug. Don't worry about it, if I enter this command, this feature, we'll see that all the suction cups appear in the right places. So we've got them in the right place, but they're still oriented, oriented a little bit weird. They're all oriented in the same way, and of course that's not how it's supposed to be. All the suction cups are supposed to be normal to the surface, or perpendicular to the surface they're on. Uh, now I'm sure there's an automatic way to do this. Um, but I, I like to do it manually, uh, rotate them around so we get a bit of uh, a bit of a organic feel and a bit of a, a handmade feel. It's not that mechanical looking. So to rotate these cups, you just uh, right click on one of them, and under here we can find the move face command. You can also use move bodies. Uh, it's, it's it does the same thing pretty much. And then you just drag these handles around until your um, your suction cup is looking the right way. So that looks great already. Um, and here are the settings, you can leave them just as they are. So don't copy it or you'll get two suction, suction cups in the same place. So just leave that unchecked and well, that's it basically. And that looks great. And just repeat this step for each of them. So I'll do that real quick. All right, and there we go. Uh, you can see that it, it's quite a tedious process, but it's not hard to do. Um, so it just takes a little bit of time, but then you get this nice organic look. Uh, one more thing you can do, uh, sometimes you've got bigger or smaller cups, so you can scale those uh, cups up a little bit. Uh, I like to use this, this search command feature for uh, looking up um, 
features that I, I don't know the position of in the in the whole user interface. So it's just a quick way to get to a tool. So I'll just hit the scale uh, feature, select one of my bodies, and then scale them. So if I make if I want to make them twenty percent smaller, for example, uh, I should just uh, type in point A, so that's 80% of the original size, for example. Press OK, now you can see that this cup is a little bit smaller. You can make them smaller, bigger, add some variety to your model. Um, so yeah, we could just leave it as it is, but it's nice to have one continuous um, continuous watertight surface. So for this we're going to use the trim command and trim all the insides here of these uh, section cups and little uh, little faces in between. You'll see what I mean by that. So for this, we'll just use the trim command. Uh, the surfaces that we're going to use are the suction cups, of course. So we'll just select all of those. Um, and the arm as well, of course. And then we'll uh, keep the selections. Um, well, I can't see what I'm keeping, so I'll just... There you go. Um, what I want to keep is, of course, the tops of the surfaces of the um, suction cups. I'll select all of those and I'll also select the arm. We want to keep that as well. All of the parts that you can see here, they can just disappear. If we hit enter, we get a nice continuous surface that's completely watertight. Uh, and just one step that you can do is add some fillets to get rid of these really sharp angles. So just add a normal fillet around all of these edges uh, with an appropriate size. So I've got 10 millimeters, that's way too much, I think. 0.5 millimeters is about what we want. And I'll select all of the edges where I want these fillets. All right, that's all of them selected. And I'll just hit enter. And we've got a nice, smooth, continuous surface. Uh, you can apply some materials to this if you want. Um, one that I really like is the sponge material. It looks kind of good for a, uh, a, a, a octopus model like this. And there you go, that's your surface cups, uh, your suction cups, I mean, made by surfacing. Now, texturing wise, uh, you can still add some detail in Blender if you want. Uh, so, for that, I refer to my Raptor series that you can watch um, in the, the Raptor series uh, playlist. Uh, and I'll, there I'll be teaching you how you can sculpt extra detail and uh, paint some extra detail on your SolidWorks model in Blender. So, that's where I'll be leaving it at. Thank you very much for sending in your question again. Uh, if you've got any more questions, comments below Facebook page and I'll get in touch with you there. Um, yeah, I wish you good luck with your surfacing model. And if you've got any more questions, I'll hear from you soon. See you in the next Raptor series. Bye.